Well, a veteran may lose his home all because of an American flag in his flower pot. Hi, everybody. It's May 21, 2019. Government fines elderly man $30,000. He can't pay it. So the city of Dundon, Florida is trying to take his property away. Why? Because he didn't mow his grass. It got too tall. How about this idea? Taxed for the miles you drive? More than a dozen states are considering charging drivers based on just how many miles they drive. Our national correspondent, Christine Frazow, takes a look at what this means in the future for everyone. It's called a VMT tax for vehicle miles traveled. 18 other states are considering the program. Instead of a toll, it would act like a user fee. The more you drive on the road, the more taxes you would pay. Dan Mitchell is an economist and senior fellow at the Cato Institute. He says the other major issue is privacy. A GPS monitor in your car could record not only how many miles you drive, but where you go and when. We've all heard of preemptive strikes, but what about preemptive prosecutions? Muslims in the U.S. are outraged by what appears to be America's latest tactic in its war on terror, entrapping people it suspects might plan terrorist acts in the future. Marina Portnoy explains how almost 95% of convictions for this crime are the result of FBI provocations. Are the result of FBI provocations. The FBI used an agent provocateur to recruit vulnerable individuals, luring them with cash and coercing them into carrying out a terrorist attack that was set up by the FBI. If you've looked around the streets of your own hometown and maybe you've seen stuff that looks like it came out of a war zone, well, get used to it. A new report by the ACLU finds that police forces throughout the U.S. are arming their law enforcement agents with weapons and tactics of war. Weapons and equipment that's specifically designed for the war zone is flooding in to local police and so when they have it they're going to want to use it. When police officers are looking like cops, I'm sorry, looking like soldiers, acting like soldiers, they're going to start to see everyone around them as an enemy instead of people to protect and to serve and so that sort of keeps the cycle going of violence. This is reaching every state. All 50 states, four U.S. territories, almost five billion dollars worth of equipment has been handed out since this program was enacted. Uh, we see that no one is really safe from this. Video we rarely see Fort Worth police on camera raiding a drug house. But tonight, a family says this video raises questions about the death of a man inside. Police used a taser on Jermaine Darton during that raid last May. He died, records show, of natural causes. A newly released report from the ACLU claims police departments across the country, including here in New Mexico, are acting too much like the military. After Peter Simonson, the lines have blurred between wars overseas and police forces on the streets at home. An Indiana woman accusing police of excessive force now and surveillance video right here caught the whole incident on camera. Tabitha Gentry says police forcibly stripped her after an arrest for a misdemeanor. So you can see they left her naked in a jail cell for hours. Gentry says the officers pepper sprayed her through the door when she yelled for clothes, and then they completely humiliated her, forcing her to walk through the jail naked. Well, this is basically a couple in Florida. They were the victims of a dawn raid on their home by both police and DHS agents. Um, they basically burst into the house at 6 a.m. The couple were in the shower. They just got out of the shower, so they, had, they were wrapped in towels. So you had basically a, a naked woman being forced onto the ground at gunpoint. And after that, they spent two hours trashing their house said apparently they were looking for electronics and laptops. She described it as, quote, two hours of pure hell. They trashed the house and left again. The DHS itself is turning into this kind of national police force, this standing army that is increasingly becoming outside of the law. And it's no secret Detroit was hit hard during the recession. Now, some of the poorest residents are facing yet another crisis no water. So far, more than 3,000 people have had their water turned off. So they've decided to appeal to the United Nations. It details the problem in Detroit and calls for the UN's help. As federal agencies stand down to what can only be described as a total collapse of our borders, the United Nations is preparing for a massive civil breakdown right here in the U.S. And they have accelerated their plan for global gun confiscation after the imminent collapse of our country, even going so far as posting job offers for commanders who will be trained to seize guns and I quote from the civilian population time we've shown you the official documents I mean this is what the UN does they've done it worldwide and uh, I guess they think we are next a posting on the United Nations career opportunities page announces a vacancy for the position of disarmament demobilization and reintegration officer under the UN's Department of Peacekeeping Operations in New York so they plan to use the border collapse to bring down this country and usher in martial law.
It seems like politicians know an awful lot about potential strikes here on U.S. soil, whether it's Lindsey Graham talking about how nukes could potentially go off in South Carolina. So you go from guys like Lindsey Graham talking about this to Obama, and he said that his biggest concern is that a nuke could go off in New York City. And it's not just nuke concerns. We have Senator Feinstein coming out and saying that there will be plots to kill Americans. So this is where I think we need to build our intelligence to see that we can disrupt the plot in this country before it happens, because there will be plots to kill Americans. One of the things I worried about 12 years ago and that I worry about today is that there will be another 9-11 attack and that the next time it'll be with weapons far deadlier than airline tickets and box cutters. Beginning in October, the Army plans to station an active unit inside the United States for the first time to serve as an on-call federal response in times of emergency. The 3rd Infantry Division's 1st Brigade Combat Team has spent 35 of the last 60 months in Iraq, but now the unit's training for domestic operations. The unit will soon be under the day-to-day -day control of U.S. Army North, the Army Service Component of Northern Command. The Army Times reports the Army unit may be called upon to help with civil unrest and crowd control. The soldiers are learning to use so-called non-lethal weapons designed to subdue unruly or dangerous individuals and crowds. Is it far-fetched to imagine that these UN peacekeeping forces would be used against American citizens? After this same unit, the 502nd, was in Arkansas practicing house-to-house -house searches and seizures in a joint UN training mission called Agile Provider in the spring of 1994. Agile Provider involved 44,000 UN troops, including troops from France and the Netherlands, training in the states of Georgia, North and South Carolina, Arkansas and Tennessee. Yes, UN troops have been trained in this country in the past, but not in brigade strengths and not in domestic support house to house searches and seizures. Many of our congressmen deny that UN troops are being trained in this country at all, but as you can see in these clips from Fort Chaffee, Arkansas, Germans were training here last spring. UN training has become so widespread that many of the newspapers around the country have had at least one such story. This official news release from the Navy High Command, Atlantcom, further confirms that UN troops were training in this country this past spring in forcible entries of homes using special operations tactics. News releases from around the country speak of law enforcement and military training together for so-called terrorist suppression involving attacks on civilian facilities. Did you know that 49 of our most famous landmarks have been given to the United Nations as supposed biospheres? Yet many of these supposed biospheres are located outside military facilities and are used for covert UN military special operations training areas. On the border between the U.S. and Canada, we see the UN flag flying between the U.S. and Canadian flags. Throughout cities in America, UN flags are popping up outside government buildings. But perhaps most disturbing was this letter received by New American Magazine detailing a survey given to Marines at 29 Palms Base. We confirmed this survey was given to Army Special Operations recruits. The survey asked troops whether they would swear to the following code. I am a United Nations fighting person. I serve in the forces which maintain world peace and every nation's way of life. I am prepared to give my life in their defense. This survey also asked if these U.S. military men would fire upon U.S. citizens who refuse or resist confiscation of firearms banned by the U.S. government. We found that these state facilities are being built in the middle of U.S. Army property as people sent us pictures of such facilities in their states, such as this facility at Camp Pinckney in Brighton, Michigan. You see not only the black vans here, but curiously, there are reverse swastikas carved into each end of the roof. We also began to receive information about the Federal Emergency Management Agency known as FEMA, such as these pictures of a FEMA facility in Texas. FEMA operations are divided into ten regions, as we were told in this letter from FEMA. The American public has been led to believe that FEMA is for disaster relief operations. Yet if we look at military manuals such as FM 4130, the U.S. Army Civil Affairs and Operations Manual, you'll find the details about who FEMA really is. The government doesn't want this information out because, as you can see, the manual says to destroy it by any means that will prevent its dissemination. The manual says that FEMA is the executive agency that serves as the point of contact for the USG for emergency management within the United States. Under Executive Order 12148 of July 20th, 1979, the President transferred all functions from the Civil Defense Civil Preparedness Agencies under the Department of Defense to FEMA. 
FEMA develops and implements overall concepts and policy guidance. It also develops plans, systems, and capabilities for protection of the U.S. populace, government, and industry, and for stabilization of the economy in time of emergency. None of this sounds too sinister until you begin to find out what FEMA has done with 96% of their budget. FEMA has built prisons around the country and they've also built underground facilities. It actually turns out that they are the key agency to implement a plan known as Operation Garden Plot, the plan to put American citizens in prison camps. Under Executive Order 12919, signed by Bill Clinton on June 3, 1993, presidential authority under a 1950s Defense Production Act was delegated to the Secretaries of Defense, Agriculture, Treasury, and Commerce to seize all civilian property for the government solely by declaring them necessary for national defense. It also gave the director of FEMA the authority to implement FEMA plans during a national emergency. Most people don't realize that this country has been in a declared state of emergency since the Federal Emergency Act was enacted in 1933, which was the beginning of FEMA, and also gave presidents the authority to issue executive orders. Shown here is a FEMA facility in Denton, Texas, where you can see mile after mile of FEMA command and control trailers, several military manuals, such as these manuals, ranging from 1985 through 1994, speak of FEMA as the implementing agency for Operation Garden Plot, the plan to put American citizens in prison camps under military control. This 1994 field manual for military police speaks of Operation Garden Plot as a DOD civil disturbance plan that tells the military what they can and cannot do and that they will operate under FEMA control. Several thousand U.S. troops are training in the U.S. this summer and fall, and if we look around us, we can see plenty of the signs and symptoms of a global takeover under the auspices of the United Nations taking place right here in our country. A sign on the facility says Airmar. Airmar is privately owned, but the signs on fences around the facility say this is a U.S. Customs facility. Several acres of federal forest land was bulldozed to create this customs facility solely for Airmar. No one knows for sure what this facility really is, but one thing is certain, it's not what we're being told it is. And there are 750 Soviet chemical trucks sitting in Mississippi whose sole use is to spray chemicals and nerve gas in chemical warfare operations. Senator Sam Nunn from Georgia was quoted as saying he was certain the American public would welcome the Soviet troops as peacekeeping forces in the United States. Not only have these Soviet trucks been found in Mississippi, people recently photographed these two clearly marked Soviet vehicles in Texas. Welcome to the New World Order. Expect no mercy.